Welcome back, guys, to the Balls for Life podcast. It's it's another exciting weekend on Rocky Top, guys. Uh, we got a lot to talk about. Well, we sure do. Uh, I mean, we got national championship game, Tim. Tennessee baseball team playing for the College World Series title. Uh, that's huge. That's going on Saturday. Uh, we got a, a commitment to talk about. Um, we got some recruiting for this up and coming weekend. Huge. Uh, talk a little bit about last weekend, a little bit this weekend. A uh, lot to talk about. Uh, guys, uh, remember to like, subscribe, uh, give us a comment, uh, hit that notification bell. Uh, all that's free and all that helps us tremendously. Uh, but Tim, let's, uh, first let's dive into the baseball team. Um, you know, it's not very often that you get to play for a national championship. And that's with any team. Uh, you know, especially Tennessee here lately. Uh, you know, it, it's huge, and I, I just feel like you need to soak it up and enjoy the moment. You better uh, stop smelling the roses when you got there. Because, I mean, it don't happen very often. I mean, it, it it's awesome. Um, you know, it love you maybe shut some of these fans up that wants to, you know, say, well, well you're opposing, good. Yeah, opposing fans. That yeah, opposing like that. fans that say, well, you're good. What did you want? But when was the last time you won something, you know, besides a conference championship? Yeah. Well, if you don't win the conference championships, then they mention that. Yeah. Once you win that, they'll, know, they'll only mention national titles. And once we win the baseball, they'll mention that only it's, it's football it's just, or basketball. Right. Yeah. Because the only two that matter, right? Yeah. Don't count. Yeah. So it, you can never shut them keep, up. But not completely. It uh, helps. But this helps, yeah. It helps. And honestly, it's a, sometimes it's a mental thing, and I think it can really go across the entire campus. Get us a title in baseball, and let's see what happens in basketball and back football in a year or two. You know, it it to me it makes almost no sense for that for that to to mean anything, but I really think it does. I mean, I uh, it sports. You know, you you figure if you're hitting the ball or catching the ball or whatever you're doing, it's all about athletics. You'd think stuff like that would matter, but I think it absolutely does matter. Well, I'll give you two instances: Florida, Kentucky. Right. Kentucky in the last decades had better teams than us multiple times. Yep. Can't get over the hump party at all against us. Yep. Uh, us, Florida, over the last thirty years, how many times we had a better team, or at least equal to? Yeah. And how many times we were able to get over the hump? It's a mental issue. Yeah. A lot of times. Um, it's something you just got to get over, but right. And I, you're saying, oh, yeah, okay. We well, you know we're playing Texas A&M, uh, a good team. Uh, we played them here uh, in the uh, SEC tournament, beat them seven to four. Uh, we had our Friday night starters going on in that one, which is probably our weakest starters. So for us to win seven to four. Uh, feels makes me feel a lot better about it, Tim. Yeah, and this really now isn't the same a and M team was what we faced. Uh, yeah. We faced a, a better A and M team. We did. Uh, they had some major injuries. Uh, you know, Montgomery, they're probably their best player on the team. Uh, out, he got knocked out in Super Regionals. Mm -hmm. He's out for the rest of the year. Uh, their uh, big time pitcher for them, uh, Sadejo, uh, he got hurt in the Super Regionals. Yeah. He's out for the year. Uh, he's out, and uh, the other guy, I cannot, I'm not going to try to say his name, but uh, he's probably their best player now, hurt his hamstring a couple of games back. It does look like he's going to play, but, I mean. Hey, with hamstrings, you can't count. I mean, it takes months to get better. Yeah. Like you said, uh, you can hurt it doing anything, but that first initial burst off of, a, let's say, he gets a hit and tries to go first. That might be the last time he plays. I mean, it's I would not be shocked mm. that I, he will play. That I'm pretty confident of. Would I be shocked that he don't doesn't make it through the series? That that I'm not. I would be. No, I absolutely agree. Um, you know, and, and something else about Texas a and they haven't had a, a a very good record away from home away from this home. year. I mean, I. They've been pretty dominant at home, but on the road, which you know most teams are better. Oh yeah, but their their record's quite a bit better. Yeah, uh, three losses at home all year long, 
and barely over 500 when it comes uh, to away or or neutral site games yeah. up until the uh, College World Series here, yeah. or, you know, Omaha. Right. Uh, so uh, there's a lot of things that points to me that makes me feel good about this series. I mean, uh, C. Chris is killing it right now. He's only gave up four runs and like the last five starts. And two of those were, um, you know, in this last game where he gave up a couple of home runs late after being pretty well dominant for the uh, first part of the game. So, I mean, uh, he's killing it being good last start uh, after being kind of shaky the last month or so. Uh, I, I'm really feeling good. I mean, we're pretty well rested up. Um, we are about as rested up so we could ever hope for. Well, the bottom line, though, Bob, we got the best lineup in college baseball, mm -hmm. and right now our best player is on the heater of his lifetime. That's true. I mean, has anybody played as good as Simo has here lately? I, I, nope. I don't know. I mean, he's just he's doing whatever he wants. He's playing at another level. Um, yeah. As soon as the uh, uh, tournament began, he's upped his game. Yeah, and it was already so freaking high, it's ridiculous. Right. So I mean, we're we're playing good. Um, you know, I, I feel really confident. Uh, you know, uh, I, I don't know what else to say, Tim, other than than I'll be kind of surprised. I mean, Texas A and M, you don't get to this the national championship game and be a bad team. Lord, you know, I mean, whoever you're facing this game, you could lose to. But, oh, absolutely. I feel pretty confident. I mean, we're the we're fairly heavy uh, favorites to win this all. Win it all. Well, don't count your chickens before the hatch, but I'll let you on a little secret. We're winning this. <laughs> right. Um, okay, Bob. Let's quickly go from there. You know, we got these all these recruits coming in this weekend. We followed a ton. Had two dozen last weekend or better. But uh, and one of those from last weekend, local kid from Jefferson County here, mm -hmm. uh, Nick Moore. Made it official yeah. just a day or so ago. Uh, coming to UT, Ernie. Yeah, uh, that was one we was really went after hard here in the last couple months. Uh, I think they really want him at center. Um, you know, we was battling West Virginia for him. Um, I think the kid really wants to play defensive tackle. Uh, we uh, West Virginia told him he could. We told him he was a better center. Yeah. And to be honest, but we wasn't the only thing to tell him he's a better offensive Yeah. Player. West Virginia's, I think, the only big time program that was already different. And some uh, discussions we had with some local people uh, with the Jefferson County football program mm -hmm. uh, on the camps and everything he was attending, pretty much everybody was telling him, you know, your future's offensive line. Everybody but West Virginia. Right. And of course, you know, you want to hear what you want to hear. I mean, you're and honestly, I'm sure he could play defensive line at some, some level. Some level. Some level. Right. But if he wants to get to the NFL, his best shot at it is, is on the offensive side of the ball. And I think he realizes that. He's a smart kid. Right. And uh, which is why we'd like him at center. Yeah, I think we value that uh, tremendously. The kid is really smart. And, you know, with our offense, we go so fast. Uh, being smart and be able to process things quickly. Uh, it's a huge deal. I mean, I, I think that's something we value big time. You, you, you're kind of the quarterback of the offensive line. You got to get up there quick. You got to get the play call. You got to get your protections. Uh, there's a lot going on there. So we really value somebody who is both physical and really uh, sharp. Yeah, and it's, to be honest about it, you know, we've been looking for a backup to uh, Cooper for a while now, and without a whole lot of success. Hopefully we'll see some on the field this year. I mean, yeah. one of the younger guys. But at this point, you know, we're still needing a, a future center. And um, Mr. Moore might be it. I think so. You know, they've went really hard. Uh, they've like, and a lot of teams do this. They'll go, we're going to get a guard. We'll get a bunch of good guards, and we'll just make one of them into a center. Um, I think, feel like almost everyone does that. Yeah, you know, I think at, they do. Even at the NFL level. Yeah. Uh, but I think that with more, they really view him as a center and went after him uh, because of, I think a lot of it was just uh, intelligence and he just fits that that game. Uh, but man, I tell you what, uh, that's a big get. But man, Tim, I tell you what, we got a huge weekend coming up here. Uh, we're in the midst of right now, the recruiting weekend. 
uh, another huge group. Yeah, you know, we uh, think we got about a dozen guys coming in. You never know until they get here. You can have some late additions, late subtractions. But some of the names, you know, we're hearing right now are, say, a couple guys that um, we led for going in uh, a few weeks ago. But it seems like we've, you know, maybe they've got excited off some other visits. Uh, I want to call in Bert Banny and uh, Shady Hayward, right? Uh, which, you know, seemed like we led for Shady for months. Yeah. Um, like we're just waiting for the commitment. It's never happened. And then all of a sudden we're behind. Right. So, um, but I like him. I, I think we'll flip both those guys back, to be honest about it. But, yeah. you know, I'm getting ahead of myself there. Um, but let's talk about some of the some quality guys down there. We're going to, one of my favorite guys, Bob Travis Smith. Yeah, big time wide receiver, a, a big wide receiver, a tall kid uh, out of Georgia. We're going against Georgia, our, our primary competition for him. Uh, you know, you got him. I think it's just, like I said, I think it's us in Georgia on that one. Well, quite honestly, I think over that one, we're going to team them up with uh, Matthews this weekend. That would be smart because it seems to be that they, we would be the preferred team, but he's going to have a hard time leading the state of Georgia. Yeah. And Mike Matthews, wide receiver, five right. star, same thing last year. Very similar situation there. And that's something they've already been talking about. Um, and I think we'll stick them together and. Well, Mike, we'll work on them all weekend long. Yeah. Um, uh, Marine Dines coming in, another big time guy who we really value. They're probably a strong side D for the men. But, uh, I mean, this guy's big time, uh, hard worker, a guy that uh, I would value if I was a coach. And I'm sure they're valuing not and Hard workers, man, those guys, they're rarely. Well, they have uh, high floors. Yeah, you know, they may never reach their ceiling, but they got high floors. And right. generally, the guys you want in your locker room. Yeah. Um, for a long time, for months now, I felt that uh, if anybody can get them out of the Midwest, it will be Tennessee. And I've not changed on that. I think yeah. we still have the best shot of getting them away from Big Ten country. Um, another big time guy we're after is uh, Bryce Donovan Jenkins, deep at the tackle. Uh, another guy we seem to really value. Well, quite honestly, Bob, I mean, We've talked about it before. We've not had the uh, quantity yeah. of success at the defensive interior defensive line. Yeah, surprising, um, but we haven't. Yeah, now we've had some quality. Yeah, we've had some quality. Uh, as far as our younger guys, we need a few more of them. And him being a legacy player, his father played basketball at uh, UT back in the day. Um, we really need to lock. Rice down this weekend. Right. I mean, you got some other guys coming in. Um, Jaden Woods, uh, commitment Radarius Jackson, Christian Gass, uh, Joachim Dotson, which is a commitment, uh, Justin Baker, commitment, commitment. Uh, Trey Poteet, which is a guy who, uh, cornerback who we seem to be the ball for. Yeah, seem to be trending there. I, I would not doubt to see a commitment there this weekend. And uh, big time. Uh, interior offensive lineman uh, Douglas Utu, uh, elite guy there. Yeah, elite interior offensive lineman, and from uh, Bishop Gorman in Las Vegas, mm -hmm. uh, a team of school that you'd love to get a pipeline to without oh, a yeah. doubt. But even without the pipeline, you take Utu all day, every day. Uh, I mean, he's five star on some of these sites uh, as an interior offensive lineman. You don't That's usually see, see that. five stars and it tear off the bottom. They they hold those for tackles. So uh, so you know he's big time. Um, it go. It sounds like to me he'd go great up next to Nick Moore, Nick and David Sanders and David Sanders on the other, on the other side. Know, sure. Yeah, I mean, I'll, you know, being greedy, but yeah, I'll take them and I'll take uh, Juan Gaston, Jacoby Ward, and. Uh, uh, let's see, Dontro Glover, which is Josh Petty, you know, yeah, Josh Petty, whatever. yeah. I mean, just give me five of those, <laughs> and that one, and just lock it up, you know. But well, I would say like this, and all jokes aside, you know, obviously we're not getting all these guys. Yeah. But that said, I mean, we've got a real shot at, at multiple ones of them, mm -hmm. and I, if things fall your way, right. uh, you know, this would easily be the best offensive line class that Glenn Ellaby's brought in. Um, his first couple of years coming off of uh, 
the uh, coming in new and all the cloud of the NCAA hanging over us. Uh, we struggled at that spot. We yeah. Last year, we had a very strong class, though, yeah. at the offensive line. Uh, and I believe we're going to very potentially very well could have back to back extremely strong offensive line mm -hmm. classes. Uh, something else I was going to mention, too. Uh, when I was looking at the, the last two weeks, visitors, a lot of big time guys, a lot of kids, probably, you know, about mid 30s amount of kids here. Uh, man, a couple things that caught my eye. Number one, uh, you know, we are seem to be not hardly leading for hardly. Like very few of these kids seem like a low number. and But we're in on the top two, three for just about every single one of them. And a lot of them top two going into these visits or uh, coming out of them last weekend. So, man, I tell you what, I, uh, it's going to be interesting. We can end up with a, you know, somewhere around 15 ranked class. If we hit big time we here, five, big. top five. I mean, uh, and that's really what you want. I mean, you, you get that top five range. Uh, and then it's just kind of, you know, it, it's so close between the number one team. Uh, if you can just get in that range. But, man, I tell you what, I tell you something else I noticed too, Tim. Uh, we're in on about 10 guys for, uh, that it's up between us and Georgia for. Uh, two things about that. One, you know if we're going against Georgia, you know, they're a dang good football player. You know, I hate to say it. But yeah, I don't want to give them any more credit than what they uh, kind of that they deserve, honestly. But right. I mean, they have been recruited elite for the last multiple years. Mm -hmm. um, easily one of the top three recruiting teams. Yeah, uh, arguably the top. They've supplanted Alabama, right? Um, but like you said, man, and, and quite honestly, Bob, and you know, it's Ohio State, Alabama. And it's who we're fighting for the majority of these guys, yeah. particularly right Georgia. Yeah. But if you don't want to, you know, if you want to be a big dog, you, you can't stay on the porch. You got to get out there and run with them. And these are the guys you run with. Well, you know, I, I think Austin Price has mentioned it several times. Uh, the recruiting guru from Valquest. Uh, you're not going to get all of these guys. You know, like I said, I think there's about ten yeah. more after. You want to get your fire shutter. So what he always says, um, you know, and if we can get maybe four or five, I'll be happy with that, considering a lot of these kids are a good portion of those 10 are in-state Georgia guys. In-state Georgia guys, yeah. Um, the good news is Georgia's got so much talent, Georgia couldn't take all of them if they wanted to. <laughs> Probably right, yeah. And then you add into the fact that Georgia recruits nationally mm -hmm. and um, really under – I went back a few years back. There was some years that the amount of Georgia players in the uh, that they signed yeah. from the state of Georgia was less than some of the teams. I think uh, Tennessee guys were signing Tennessee players. Yeah, it, it's crazy, really. They are a super good producing state. football state. I mean, top five in the country, and they pretty much have the state to themselves as far as I mean. They got Georgia Tech. But that's yeah. not a real good competition. No, but the biggest problem with them, though, everybody around them poaches out of Georgia. Yeah, Auburn has lived. But they are the only true state school they have to worry about. Yeah, Auburn has lived off of them. Uh, well, Florida State, when we're good. Tennessee, and a lot of other states. That's Clemson. Out of Clemson has come in a lot. Yeah. So, uh, you know, it's shocking how few they actually get from the state of Georgia, considering even now how great they are. So but that's by choice, though. It is a lot by choice, but I really don't understand that logic. I'm getting in states kids and and uh, cherry pick outside, cherry pick outside. Yeah, they seem to do the opposite. They do. They they do. Right? Working out pretty well for them though. It, so, it does, but I think it, there's some flaws in that. I mean, it, there's potential for it. if you slip any, come on down, and then you've neglected a lot of these high schools and these high school coaches in places like Tennessee, Florida State, whoever Auburn. Are coming in and Alabama, whoever Clemson, are coming in and and making some inroads in these high schools. Um, you could potentially slip far. Well, you can because we had a similar situation under former, whereas uh, sometimes because we the lack of in-state guys we went after, um, it would hurt us some. We had to make up for it. Um, yeah, you pissed off some high school coaches. You pissed off. I mean, that's just the way it is. They get. 
ticked off if you don't recruit their guys when you feel when they feel like they are SEC caliber guys. You did, and then it's hard to get them to. You know, you don't want to piss off family. You don't want to piss off high school coaches. You know, two things you don't want to do. Yeah. Um, now in this day and age, though, the instead of putting salve on it, you put a little green on it. Green. Yeah. yeah. And it feelings are unhurt. So, <laughs> absolutely sure. Uh, or hurt feelings or not, check, check still cash. Check. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, uh, but guys, I, I think that's all for this episode. Uh, we do appreciate you. Uh, remember to like, subscribe. Uh, comment, hit that notification bell. And the main thing is um, go balls, win a national championship. National title, baby. Now, this weekend, go big orange.